welcome back to Molly's Haunted Mansion. We're talking about all things creepy and unusual, darling. We had Halloween all year round and out. <laughs> Today's topic, darlings, is going to be about the Grim Reaper. But this time, darlings, it's going to be on a true story. So let's talk spooky, shall we, darlings? Let's get to it. My dear auntie has seen the Grim Reaper. Now this lady of mine, my dear auntie, she does not lie. She's a very sweet person and she always throws parties at her house. So darlings, when she threw her parties, everyone would come because she was such a good chef. She would make some amazing lasagna. I mean like, I love her lasagna. Anyway, darlings, what happened is, is every time I would go to these family summer gatherings, I would walk into the house. And the thing is, though, is she lived in the Amadon Valley, so near the hills. So every now and then, when you go into the backyard, darlings, you would see reindeers and deers and just really cute little creatures, foxes on the hills. It would be really pretty, darlings. But she would always be like, be careful for ticks. <laughs> so, you know, we wouldn't get too close to the grassy area of the hill. But we would stay in the backyard, in a cute little backyard. But anyway, darling, the house inside is what really creeped me out because it was so creepy and dark feeling. I mean, like anybody that walked in that house would realize that there is something dark amongst that house that lived in there or visit from time to time or lingered around that house somehow. And the crazy thing, darlings, is that when you walk into the house, you would see this big giant cross because it had really high ceilings. You would walk in and see this big cross, big, hanging on the wall. And then down that hall, you would see the dining room. And then there you would see the kitchen. But before that, darlings, you would walk in the living room. So you would turn to your left and there was a big narrow hall, darlings. And through that narrow hall, it was very dark, always dark, even when the sun was out. So darlings, you would walk down that hall and right at the end, you would see a bathroom. But before the bathroom, darlings, you would see this room that was always open. And I remember always going to her house and always feeling this darkness upon it. There, especially through that hallway, especially heaviness upon myself and the room. And I would use the restroom and then walk by and always peek through that room, which was open, wide open. I would look. And as I would look, I would see, so here's the door. I walk in through the door and the bed was like an L. So it was, here's the wall, here's the bed, here's the headboard. And then behind that bed was the window that actually was leading through the backyard where you could see the deer and stuff, the deers and the live animals. And I remember looking, but she had it closed for some reason. It always was closed. And no matter how light it was, it just looked dark in there, darling. So, you know, I've been coming to this house for several years and I have felt this energy. So what I did was I walked back to the house. I mean, walked back to my auntie outside. Of course, I grabbed a plate and then I walked down and I walked over to her. And I asked her, dear auntie, have you ever noticed anything strange about this house or feel anything? Have you seen anything in this house? Because I just always use the restroom and I always feel this darkness upon me, especially down that hall and basically through the whole house. <laughs> and then she told me, well, you know, darling, um, there has been something that been troubling and quite creepy that went on in this house. So as she was trying to tell me what was going on in the house, darlings, she seemed hesitant because she probably didn't want to freak me out or freak anybody out in the house that was visiting. But darling, she told me that one night, no, not one night, actually, this happened in bright daylight. So anyway, darling, she said that one morning she woke up in the morning, went to her kitchen, passing that room, 
that's next to the bathroom. Passing that room and going in the kitchen to make herself some coffee. As she was making herself some coffee, she let the coffee maker make her coffee, you know, the ones that do it for you. And she wanted to get something back in her room. And it happened at 11 a.m. in the morning, darlings. And the 11 a.m. in the morning, she said it was summer. And I guess she had the window kind of open and it was a little bit bright in there because the sun was really shining. And But it was a little bright. So she said that she had to get something from the room, another room, not that room. And she walked by the hallway, that long, spooky, dark hallway, darlings. And she was walking like normal. As she passed the room, she saw something dark and tall and a strange feeling, like a chill. And she t saw it in the corner of her eye. You know, in the corner of your eye. You know how sometimes you see, think you see dark things in the corner of your eye. And then you look and it's actually maybe like a sock or, well not a sock. <laughs> like a jacket hanging on a jacket hanger or something like that. But anyway, darling, she saw something in the corner of her eye. And as she saw something in the corner of her eye, she thought that looks very odd and very unnormal. She turned around, darlings, and she looked straight into the room. She said that she felt so stiff. She felt frozen, and she didn't know what to do. She just kept staring. And believe it or not, darlings, she saw the Grim Reaper. But the weird thing about it is that he wasn't standing there looking at her like this with the sight because she said that when she looked into the room, remember darlings, I said, here's the headboard, here's the bed, and behind that is the window. So it was shaped, it was, the bed is against the wall. She looked over to the window and the Grim Reaper was walking. He would go back and forth, darlings. I just find that very odd that he kept going back and forth like that in the room. I asked her, darlings, I asked her, I was like, why, why do you think he was there? She was, I have no idea. But she said it was as clear as day and she couldn't believe her eyes. She blinked a couple of times and re-looked and he was there. And he was, she said that he was very, very quiet, just floating back and forth. She said that he, she saw the black cloak and within his face, you couldn't really see the face because he was to the side. But she said that it just looked like it was dark inside the, the, uh, the hood. And she said that he was holding his scythe. And you couldn't see the hands because the sleeves were over. And he was just walking back and forth. And she didn't know why it was in that room, darlings. But I continued to say, are you sure there's nothing that happened in the room? that was sad or is there anything that like a death in the house that happened and then she finally told me that her dear father has died in that room and you know the grim reaper is there to collect souls and the weird thing is that I don't understand why he was there maybe that house had a lot of things happening because she no longer lives there and she never said why that why she moved from that house in the Almaden Valley. She never said anything like I just can't live there no more because it's so creepy. I don't she just kind of moved and I feel like the reason why she moved darling is because there was things going on in that house that she could not stop or Maybe it freaked her out. Maybe there was things happening because I know for a fact, darlings, that that house had something more to it, like more to it, more darkness, more depth, more everything. Like I just, the way I felt in that house was just uncanny. So seeing the Grim Reaper is basically a symbolization of death and it's really, really spooky to say that because, you know, you know, what happened to her dear father. May her father rest in peace. 
and the, she no longer lives there which i'm very happy for her because she deserves a happy life and darling she's truly a sweetheart and with a really good heart and soul she's always very giving very very um hospitable she's when you go into her home it's just smells amazing looks amazing i mean that house was most definitely very scary darlings but the way she made the house feel was so much more but darlings that includes our spooky crazy story for today of seeing the grim reaper with her own eyes and maybe much more in that house darlings i mean she doesn't live there anymore so I wonder, I always wonder, darlings, like, the people that have bought the house, like, are they witnessing anything uncanny and spooky there? Because I grew up in a haunted house, and I shall tell you my stories of my haunted, you know, my haunted things that I've seen. Um, but I'll do that another time. But darlings, I always wonder if the house that I lived in, if the people that live there now are getting haunted or the of the house that my auntie my dear darling auntie lives in um used to live in have they seen the grim reaper or anything on scary so you know we'll never know darlings we shall never know but anyway darlings if you like the content that i'm talking about please press the like darlings and if you really like to hear more stories then hit the subscribe button on the bottom right there and that would notify you that i have something spooky going on darlings <laughs> and strange and unusual <laughs> so anyway darlings i'm gonna go into my coffin and have cuddle times with my cats <laughs> and finish my book <laughs> anyway darlings have a good one. A war darling.